And now we're gonna find out the key to Stonehenge and whether it's just a hoax. Pow, it's Magzel from Cabal. Stones. Stones are very ordinary. They're not alien technology or some complex chemical elements. But hold your horses, the pyramids in Egypt essentially are just stones as well. Nevertheless, they are considered a wonder of the world. And Stonehenge in particular continues to arouse great interest among people to this day. This program is cabal in the evaluation of today's episode is not really. Not really. Standard, because today I'm gonna debunk to you multiple things at once, so watch till the end. Otherwise, you know how it goes, one turns on the video in the middle and I say there. But with all this, unicorns can only appear once a year. Stonehenge is a complex of stone structures located in Wiltshire County, England. This is one of the most famous archaeological monuments. It's been included in the UNESCO World Heritage List, with its mysterious origin and even more mysterious inexplicable purpose. What complicates things is that there is a lot of evidence that this is actually a fake built in 1954. From Atlanteans to global navigation for extraterrestrial ships, from druids to a reactor, the range of opinions on what Stonehenge is is simply colossal. Hmm? Rock, look cool and rock. Ooga booga. Aliens! Aliens! No one can tell you for sure what year it was built. No one can say with certainty what it was built for, and especially not by whom. Whoever built it though really wanted humans to have cool desktop wallpapers in the future. Of course what remains now, this handful of who knows what, is not actually how it all is supposed to look at all, but like this. Well, now that's at least beautiful. If this was made by aliens from earthly materials, why the hell did it all fall apart? People are going crazy over Stonehenge. It's a spaceport. No, it's a portal to another world. These are fanatics. They're no better than cultists. But this time, we're dealing with something different. In 1954, everything changes diametrically, and now people completely refuse to believe in the extraterrestrial origin of Stonehenge and think that it was built right there, in 1954. But why? Because someone around 2010 wrote on the internet. Guys, it stands to reason they built it in 1954. You wanna see it? I have photos, but I won't give you the link where I got them from because it's highly classified information. What a debunker! Two call a word from me. Well, now everything's clear. Stonehenge is nothing more than a fabrication by workers. That settles it. I'm done then. Just a second. I'd like to figure this out. Let's start with the fact that this version is picked up by TikTok. And you know me, I love TikTokers. Get the hell out of here. My fake. This really calls into question the truthfulness of even a single word. Yes, I agree, the photographs clearly show the process of creating Stonehenge from scratch. And even a place that is poured with concrete, cranes placing stones there and so on. You can even see that inside one stone straight up sticks out a concrete rod. What a piece of shoddy work. Isn't one ashamed to mess with people like that? Did you see? It collapsed again. What can I do? It keeps falling. The client is already furious. Actually, I got one little idea. Listen, last time I trusted you, do you really want to repeat the incident with the pizza tower? Do you really want that? I'm off for double-sided. Only the thing is, this isn't building from scratch. It's a restoration of the object. Restoration is when crap is turned into safe and watchable crap, the way it used to look so nothing falls off and nobody gets banged up. 
And of course, modern technology is used for this. Because when they were restoring the pyramids, they didn't obtain the stones like the ancient Egyptians did. In 1797, one stone fell, and it all started when in 1901, another two finally collapsed. Therefore, the first restoration work was carried out at Stonehenge. They simply took and raised them. In 1920, there were further changes, rearrangements, then again, again, and suddenly in 1954, a reconstruction was carried out. It's when vanished or non-surviving parts are being recreated for display purposes. So yeah, lifting stones, concrete, and setting them in a new way. Dr. Christopher Chippendale, a senior research fellow at the Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology in Cambridge, England, openly states that almost all the stones have been moved and reinforced. And some stones, if not all, are simply replicas of how they used to look before. Why? Because the key to Stonehenge is erosion. I'll remind you that it's not only your beautiful car that suffers from it, but also stones. And they're not stones in the first place, but megaliths. And they're found all over the world. Stonehenge is just the most famous. There is America's Stonehenge too, with an original name. America's Stonehenge. And it has problems not only with its name. Here it is. <laughs> Listen, you've been promising me for two months that you're gonna build like in Britain. Meanwhile, it's all goodness knows what. Don't worry, brother. We will do it all real quick. Everything will be done by tomorrow. Or the day after. And you know what these say? The ones who believe in conspiracy theories. That's a fake photo, just like your damn Stonehenge. It's Photoshop. It's a costume show. You're a dumbass. I don't understand shit. Yes. Maybe you're right. Maybe. But let me show you engravings and writings from 1440, from the 17th century. Ah oh, yes, these two can supposedly be forged, even though they're kept in museums. Well, alright. This is Frederick William Van Loon, and this is an atlas. Mmm, Atlas Van Loon. It was written in 1664, and it's an important guidebook to England. And yes, it has Stonehenge in it. Forgery this, piece of shit. Or how do you think it all went down? Stonehenge is sure a great idea, but I should probably write that it's all just my imagination. Oh, a quill broke. Off to the printing press. As a matter of fact, in the Atlas Van Loon, one can find another similar structure, which suggests that our Stonehenge might not have been the only one. There was also a third Stonehenge, but it was made of wood, so nothing has survived. You'll be surprised, but there is also a fourth Stonehenge. Stonehenge Aotearoa in New Zealand. But everything is simpler with it, it was built in 2004. Nothing surprising, of course, but there is almost no mention of Van Loon on the internet. Classic. There's also a heap of written evidence. Here's a whole list. Here's how it turns out. I'm debunking debunkers. But what do the debunkers have to do with it? What's Stonehenge for, anyways? What's the meaning of Stonehenge? It's killing me that no one knows. I know, among underage not only intellectuals, there is a shit ton of theories. But the most real thing is that this structure served as a calendar for determining the solstice. And not just the summer one as it's commonly believed everywhere, but also the winter, to observe the phases of the moon and possibly even to predict eclipses. It's so to speak an ancient computing technology, only without electronics. For that matter, scientists have long studied Stonehenge under a microscope, X-ray fluorescence spectrometry and have come to the conclusion that it all was completely built in the 1600s. B.C. 
and the 25 ton boulders were dragged from West Wales. Interestingly, scientists constantly attempt to make it too, try to recreate how it might have been done, but they don't succeed at all. Well, they kinda do, but with very great difficulty. It requires a lot of people, superhuman efforts and dedication. It's a Herculean task that takes not just one century, but some jerk wants to take and create it all to ordinary builders with cranes. The failed debunkers simply took photos from the website of Historic England, where everything's described in detail, that restoration is being done, casts are being taken from stones and so on. Top secret, you might as well freak out. I always promote critical thinking, but not to such an extent of becoming completely dumb from its own guesses. With such trends, I'm even afraid to imagine what will happen, let's say, in a thousand years. <laughs> I won't make it home. I'll have to use a public one. Ooh, my condolences to you, bro. Two thousand years later. And here they probably worshipped gods. I knew that. <gasps> By the way, if you want to go and explore Stonehenge, you can do so, but only from a distance of 15 yards, because there is a fence around it. Approaching it up close is only allowed on solstices for those who consider themselves druids. Druids are those who follow druidry. What? Actually, in both modern and ancient traditions, they are nature-focused pagans liking to connect with the land and throw parties, aka festivals. Such a tradition appeared because someone once said that Druids built this beauty. Only that's not the case. Stonehenge was built even before Druids appeared, and they seemed to use this building for their rituals. Only shh, if you have any Druid acquaintances, you don't tell them. Why upset them? So if you're a druid or a Celtic oracle, which I don't doubt, then you'll be able to touch these pebbles yourself. Customs and Traditions of Ancient Druids, Volume 1 By the way, I forgot to say that in 1915, Stonehenge was sold at auction! It's just that the estate where Stonehenge is located belonged to Sir Edmund Antrobus, and after his death it went up for auction, and there was sent a lawyer, Cecil Chubb, by his wife to buy a set of dining chairs, but he returned with Stonehenge instead. It was sold for $33,000, slightly more than one million in today's money. <sighs> I hate inflation. Anyway, it so happened that the lawyer's wife, Mary, wasn't thrilled with his monumental buy. Um, perhaps because she still pined for that dining room set. Which made it an easier decision when Chubb gifted Stonehenge to the British people in 1918. That's why the British government launched this extensive renovation of Stonehenge. Incidentally, Chubb wanted those who lived near Stonehenge to receive free admission to the monument. So to this day, around 30,000 of the 1.3 million people who visit annually do so for free. So the thing that Stonehenge is fake is definitely fake. On the other side, honestly, I want to believe there is at least something in the world that higher powers have had a hand in, but it's hard to believe. Subscribe to the crop, put the stones up, well, let's seal it all with an expose dance. <laughs> Somebody